Hello everyone, we're here with Dr. Mimi Kim. Uh, Dr. Mimi Kim works at the Albert Einstein Institute of Medicine um, and she is the head of the Division of Biostatistics um, and she is the lead for our Collective Data Analysis Initiative. Um, so welcome, Dr. Kim. Thank you very much. Um, so can you summar for, summarize for us the general purpose of what CDAI is? Certainly. So um, many clinical trials in the past have unfortunately had a very low success rate in terms of identifying effective new therapies for lupus. So the LFA decided to establish the CDAI, the Collective Data Analysis Initiative, so that we can learn from the outcomes of patients who are assigned to the standard of care arms of past lupus trials. And um, by, by learning from their experience, we can hopefully improve the way future design, uh, future studies are, are designed, conducted, and analyzed. Uh, currently, the database includes patients, um, uh, like over uh, over a thousand patients from over half a dozen uh, clinical trials. So the CDAI is actually a very large and rich database, um, and it's uh, going to be a great resource for us to mine uh, to address some challenging methodologic questions uh, in, in lupus uh, clinical trials. Um, and what were the main findings of your study? And what were the main findings of your study? So there have been three uh, main projects that have come out of the CDAI uh, initiative. Um, the first study, we looked at the effect of background therapies on response rates uh, and flare rates um, to get a better understanding of why the placebo response rates appear to be so high uh, in lupus clinical trials. Uh, the second project, we looked at longitudinal patterns of response um, over 12 months. Um, of patients who were assigned to standard of care, and um, we found actually that a patient's response status measured early in the clinical trial didn't necessarily correlate well with their later responses, and this has important implications for how long you want the study to last, and also for whether interim results can really be used to predict um, how well a patient is going to do long term. Um, and our third project, this is one that I'm going to be talking about this afternoon, is on ways to estimate response duration um, with, with data that can be very messy in a, cl in a clinical trial. And the reason why uh, response duration is important um, is that you'd be able to tell a patient, uh, if you do respond to this therapy, this is how long the therapy is expected to last. Okay, that's fine. And can you help us understand what exactly this means for our constituents? Uh, in terms of, you mean, for, for, for clinical trials? For clinical trials and individuals who are living with lupus. Right. So I think that um, by, um, by uh, um, focusing on things like response duration, understanding better the sources of heterogeneity in clinical trials, um, we can um, hopefully come up with better designs and better approaches for, our, uh, for identifying effective new therapies and bringing them to the patients more quickly. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Dr. Kim. Um, we're very happy to have you here, um, and we're looking forward. Can you also um, let us know what's next for you? What's next for CDAI? Um, well, what's next is uh, for us to continue to uh, leverage this uh, enormous resource uh, to, again, think of ways uh, to improve how clinical, future clinical trials are designed and, and conducted. Um, we're going to continue to develop uh, robust, um, more discriminatory endpoints, uh, understand different sources of variability, and also uh, evaluate um, novel analytic approaches uh, for analyzing uh, lupus clinical trial data. All right. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Kim. Um, we look forward to your presentation today and to find out more about CDAI. Alrighty. Thank you, everyone.